nature strangers to the deep and must venture here with caution, for this is a dangerous realm of mysterious creatures, the beautiful and the deadly. This hidden kingdom, 70% of the Earth's surface, teems with life, from gentle sea lions to fearsome predators and creatures that still baffle scientists today. Beneath the surface of sunlit waves lies a secret world. More startling in its spectacle, more baffling in its mystery than any wilderness on land. But the sea is as fragile as it is mysterious. This hidden realm has endured for millions of years. But now its very survival is threatened. 200 billion pounds of pollutants a year endanger all creatures that rely on the ocean for life. From helpless birds to every one of us. Today, scientists seek to meet the challenge, to unlock the secrets of the deep before time runs out. To probe the deep, Navy scientists have perfected a space-age craft. Called the SSP Kaimalino, it's the ultimate in marine exploration. From the bridge, Dr. William Evans leaves to begin work below. Formerly with the Naval Undersea Center, he's now director of the Hub Sea World Research Institute in San Diego. Dr. Evans descends to the observation bubble to join his colleague, Dr. Scott Johnson. They'll share a unique vantage point, a chance to experience the mysterious deep as few ever have before. These dolphins offer one of the sea's most baffling riddles. For some scientists now believe the dolphin is as intelligent as man. Roaming the restless currents of the Pacific at speeds of up to 22 miles an hour, they offer a friendly escort to the scientists of the SSP. For marine scientist William Evans, the ride offers a rare chance to study the dolphin. For in the SSP, he can swim alongside them, experience their world. Centuries before we developed tools to probe the deep, we filled it with creatures from our imaginations. Ancient maps depicted vast and unknown waters. Once a ship lost sight of land, sailors feared they might fall off the edge of the earth. In the deep, we pictured mighty gods. The Greeks called their lord of the sea Poseidon. When his temper flared, he whipped the sea into storms. A fearsome creature of legend was the kraken, a giant squid. Today, scientists believe the kraken actually exists, a hunter over 50 feet long. Proof, perhaps, that not all legendary monsters are figments of the human mind. By 1716, men finally started to explore the ocean for themselves. Noted astronomer Edmund Halley constructed a wooden diving bell with air piped from above. It could be lowered 60 feet deep. Then in 1929, a steel sphere reached depths exceeding 3,000 feet. In 1959, the Trieste, conceived by August Picard, descended beyond 18,000 feet, free of cables linking it to the world above. It promised a new age of undersea exploration. Today, despite scientific breakthroughs, the ocean's depths remain a mystery. For Dr. William Evans, a personal challenge. One hunter of the deep can rival the monsters of ancient myth for sheer ferocity, the shark. Of all undersea creatures, this is the most feared. But not all sharks are dangerous to man. Some eat only fish and plankton. No matter what the prey, their reputation as fearsome hunters is richly deserved. 
Whales are among the largest creatures to ever inhabit our planet. The killer whale can eat 400 pounds of fish in a single day and grow to reach four tons. The dolphin may be the most intelligent member of the whale family. Great or small, these mammals are among the wonders of the deep, but many thousands of whales a year are killed by the world's whaling industries. Strict international laws are being passed to offer protection, but several species of whale may someday be as extinct as the dinosaur. A coral reef is a battleground in the endless struggle for food, an undersea jungle teeming with life, where predator and prey are ablaze with color. For some, the best defense is caution. On the reef, the hunted play a deadly game of hide and seek with hungry enemies. Though barely a foot long, the lionfish fears no predator, not even man, for its sharp spines inject a poison similar to cobra venom, and every bit is lethal. In the dangerous environment of the coral reef, one creature is immune to the poison of the anemone's tentacles. The damselfish nestles among them and feeds on morsels left by its venomous host. Of all reef dwellers, perhaps the most misunderstood is the octopus. For despite its reputation, this creature is shy and retiring. Nature has equipped the octopus with a unique defense. When in danger, it can change color for camouflage. Close relatives of the shark, rays and skates, have changed little in millions of years. So sharp is the barb and the stingray's tail, some primitive tribes use them to tip their spears. On the ocean floor, hordes of starfish travel in a slow, never-ending search for prey. The starfish has thousands of tube feet, which do more than move it. They also pry open shellfish, a vital source of food. Like the starfish, lobsters are bottom dwellers. They have a hard outer shell instead of an internal skeleton. Few hunters of the sea can crack the armor of their defenses. Some crabs add a camouflage of moss to their regular shell to conceal them as they lie and wait for food. The bright colors of the sea slug give warning of its bad taste, keeping enemies at bay. Like bizarre plants, sea anemones wave in the tide's ebb and flow. They're actually animals, hunters that lure unwary fish onto their stinging tentacles. Once the fish has been stunned by the poison, the anemone devours it. But as the sea anemones wait in ambush, their bright bouquets can rival any spring meadow on land.
The tide pools at the edge of the sea nurture an amazing variety of life, from starfish and sea urchins to anemones and hermit crabs. Some scientists believe it was in tide pools like these that all life on Earth began. Each day, the tides bring new food for the creatures of the land that rely on the sea for survival. Animals like the sea lion, whose colonies line the California coast, come here to feast on fish. For the spirited sea lion, the ocean is more than a vital source of food. It's also a place to play. Nature's harmony is all too easily destroyed, for this peaceful picture of undersea life is menaced by an invader from land. Pollution threatens to turn the living oceans into a watery wasteland. From the giant whale to these microscopic plankton, no creature can escape. Perhaps because we've always seen ourselves as creatures of the land, we believe the sea was a safe dumping ground. We allowed harmful chemicals, factory waste, sewage, and pesticides to pollute our seas. But the results of our own thoughtlessness have come back to haunt us. This victim of an oil spill can no longer fly or find food. Its tragedy is repeated thousands of times each year. For scientists like Dr. William Evans, a grim warning of where our society has led us. Ever since primitive man moved from the forest down to the edge of the ocean, the process of pollution, man-made pollution, started in the very early days when villages were being built and people were beginning to gather together for purposes of protection and to utilize the ocean. This form of pollution has continued at an increasing rate as the populations have increased, as man's technological developments have increased, and it got to a point as our industrial technology gained and gained, we began to impact heavier and heavier on this environment. As our technology has grown, so has our knowledge. We know pesticides sprayed over land will flow in polluted rivers to kill fish at sea. Oil spills from offshore drilling can destroy much marine life. For years, waste from factories seemed a small price to pay for prosperity. Now we've learned that all life on land and sea is one, and that there are no safe dumps on Earth. The temptation has been irresistible to abandon waste far at sea, out of sight, out of mind. We must find new ways to recycle and dispose of our garbage before the balance of undersea life is drastically upset. In the search to restore nature's balance, scientists have discovered that the worst damage of pollution may be hidden from human eyes, for organisms that affect all life are now in danger. These tiny plants and animals drifting with the currents, known as plankton, are more miraculous than any legendary monster of the deep. Not because they bring death, but because they assure life. All creatures in the sea depend on plankton for survival. Some feed on them directly. Others feed on animals which rely on plankton for food. Viewed through a microscope, the millions of plankton in a quart of water reveal a startling universe. 
like creatures from outer space. We may soon rely on plankton ourselves, for they are a rich source of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. When the rest of our food sources are exhausted, these pastures of the sea may provide the food of the future, if we have the wisdom to assure their survival. Without these tiny plankton, there might be no life in the sea at all, and man-made pollution threatens them as never before. The sea, which cradles such tiny, fragile forms of life, is also a mighty force that shapes the land. Driven by the currents and the wind, waves batter down the land's defenses. Against so persistent an attack, not even solid rock is strong enough. It will take hundreds of years for waves to wear down the largest boulders bit by bit into pebbles. And finally, millions of particles of sand. While waves hollow out these cliffs in California, along other coasts, they build up the shores with sand. The sea is both builder and destroyer, shaping the land with the sure, firm hand of a sculptor. The sea shapes the world's weather as well. Arctic air, cooled by snow and ice, flows over the globe to influence the world's climate. Over the oceans, the clash of these cold arctic winds with warmer air currents may create powerful storms. Written in this angry swirl of clouds is a hurricane spawned at sea, whipping the ocean into a frenzy. With a hurricane, seas we have polluted for too long seem to take their revenge on our world at last. The stubborn sea doesn't yield easily to exploration, but scientists believe it's essential the work continue in spite of the risks. The ocean itself is a very hostile environment. It uh, has a lot of adverse effects on equipment, and it's very difficult to get measurements in the sea, although that's where most of the answers to some of the questions we are asking actually lie. And so therefore, we must go to the sea and ships we must be able to view what goes on on the surface of the ocean and under the ocean. Perhaps the deep has always fascinated us because it is the ultimate unknown. Today, that eternal fascination has taken on new urgency. For with the resources of land dwindling, our future may lie beneath the surface of the sea. Inventors have perfected bizarre craft for underwater work, to swim as fast as any fish, to question, explore, photograph, and above all, to learn. With sophisticated instruments, scientists may map the ocean floor or record the mysterious sounds of undersea creatures we're only beginning to understand. Even the design of ships has drastically changed. Where a traditional destroyer plows awkwardly through angry seas, new craft like the SSP ride serene, unruffled by choppy waters. But to truly profit from the sea, more important than new ships or new instruments is an ancient dream. Living in gentle harmony with nature can offer a ray of hope. The fish of the world's oceans can feed a starving world for centuries to come. Offshore drilling for oil, if done at all, must be planned with deep respect for the environment.
All life once came from the sea. At last, we're ready to become creatures of the sea once more. Now that we live here, will we learn to be gentle to the environment, or will we merely plunder the deep, as we did the land in ages past? At first, we may seem like helpless infants, awkward in our strange new life. Fears thousands of years old will not be shed easily. We may hesitate on the threshold of this undersea dimension. But if we can adapt and survive, the rewards will be beyond imagining. In the foreseeable future, the ancient dream of Atlantis, cities on the ocean floor, can be fulfilled. We may at last feel at one with the deep, to swim like the fish in the sea and enjoy a greater sense of freedom than we ever knew before. The land's scarce resources are vanishing quickly. These first cautious samples will soon lead to intensive mining of undersea minerals and harvesting of plant life for human food. If we can learn to do this, and leave the life of the environment intact, we will have earned the right to share the limitless treasures of the deep.